And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Jesus says this to his disciples regarding the need to pray always and not to lose heart. To illustrate, he tells a parable of an unfit judge and a persistent widow. The character of the judge is, if we are honest, quite distressing, discomforting. He has no fear of God and no respect for people, and he says so several times in his inner dialogue in the story. What kind of judge is he? Judges in that time were arbitrators of both spiritual and civic matters, a role which required spiritual depth, compassion, knowledge, and the ability to weigh the case, the details of a case. And the widow, she is relentless. She does not fit the biblical stereotype of a widow of the time. She is persistent and plucky. In the original Greek, she is seeking vengeance against her adversary. And she comes every day. She is tenacious in her asking. The judge is concerned that in the sight of others, by her showing up every day and accosting him, she is giving him a black eye. In a shame and honor culture, she is becoming a threat to the honor of the judge. For that reason alone, he grants her justice. He doesn't have a change of heart. He simply gives in to her request to avoid the social fallout. He's weighed nothing. When have you experienced someone persistently pestering you over and over again for something? Sometimes you may give in just to have some peace, and other times it may be the correct thing to do, the just thing to do. And then there are times when you may even have a change of heart. So why does Jesus tell this story to his disciples now? They are becoming disheartened and weary. It's not easy to live a disciple's life and to follow him. Jesus is encouraging them. He knows his disciples will struggle even more after he is crucified. They will not only be disillusioned, but bereft and persecuted as well. He is preparing his disciples with a series of parables about the secular and corrupt forces of the day, always pointing to the faithfulness of God who seeks out the lost sheep and seeks always to give support to the pursuit of justice, just as he illustrates in this story today. If the unjust judge will mete out justice when pestered beyond patience, will God not seek justice? Perhaps we understand something about wrestling in the place between the soul, beliefs, and the world. As we enter into the time of house meetings for Justice Knox, one of the questions asked is, what keeps you awake at night? It is an inquiry of wrestling on the border between man and God, a wrestling within the soul. The very heart of night is a liminal place, a thin place, which separates earth and heaven, the conscious and unconscious. For Jacob, the river Jabbok is a boundary. It is a physical boundary between Mesopotamia and Cana, and it is a liminal space where he wrestles with his belief in God and his own actions. And if you recall, Jacob stole his brother's birthright, fled his brother's wrath, is tricked by Laban into marrying both his daughters, is enslaved to build Laban's own herds and fortune, to earn the hand in marriage, seven years for each daughter. It's 20 years now. God has called Jacob to return to Cana, His wives, children, and animals have all crossed over into Cana, and here he is on the riverbank, wrestling through the night, facing his own fears. And he's wrestling with a man, never relinquishing his hold, never giving up, 
And just before morning's light, Jacob's opponent asked to be released. In that moment, Jacob is given a new name, a blessing, and a wound he will carry as a limp for the rest of his life. He has wrestled with God and not given up, not let go. So it is for us as we struggle with the multitude of issues in our world. Here on earth, we each serve as an agent of justice. We are the hands and feet, the heart and eyes of Christ in the world. So it is up to us to wrestle with the issues, to examine our own souls and beliefs, weighing our faith and our convictions in order to thoughtfully and persistently strive to make changes, to bring about a more just society, to call attention to complacency, to challenge the world we live in. For it begins with wrestling with God and never letting go nor giving up. This week, the gunman who killed 17 children in Parkland, Florida, was sentenced to life in prison without parole. According to New York Times, the parents of those who were killed were horrified and baffled as they learned his life had been spared. The jury indicated the prosecutors had convinced them the killings were warranted. The killings warranted the possibility of the death penalty. But in light of the gunman's deeply disturbed life, they rejected capital punishment. The defense lawyers argued that Mr. Cruz's brain was damaged before birth. He suffered from fetal alcohol spectrum disorder that had never been properly diagnosed. His mental disability was a result of his biological mother smoking, drinking, and abusing drugs while pregnant with him. One juror listened intently to the entire case and determined Mr. Cruz was mentally ill. That juror was a hard no to the death penalty. In the end, three of the 12 jurors voted to spare Mr. Cruz's life. The courtroom was up in arms at the decision. The parents were devastated. Seeking justice, being just, takes courage and faith. Jesus knows this, and his words are as fresh today as they were then. We will get discouraged, disheartened, and disillusioned, just like the disciples. We may feel it's not worth it, it's too hard, nothing is changing anyway, and support is waning. We may even feel persecuted for the stand we take for our beliefs and values. So I invite you to dare to wrestle within your own soul, to reflect on your baptismal covenant promise, to uphold the dignity of every human being as you move through your days, encounter injustices in the world. Whether you go to the voting booth or are called to serve on jury duty or asked to arbitrate a challenging situation or simply to stand for a cause. Each situation calls for an examined life guided by the living word and lived in faith, grounded in prayer. For each one of us as a disciple of Jesus of Nazareth, we who, like Jacob, need to wrestle through the night for a gift that will have greater impact than you can ask or imagine. It is in the persistence, the wrestling with the conscious, that faith is strengthened. A blessing may be received, and yet you may be left limping for a lifetime.